All right, so good morning, students. Good morning, BS Criminology Seconder. So finally, we'll see each other now. So I'm so sorry for not meeting you these past few days because of some important activities that I really have to attend to. But now, I will try my very best to cope with the schedule which we miss. Now, before we start, I'd like to announce that right after this discussion, I will be giving you your examination, our midterm examination, and uh, just check your GC for a further instruction, maybe this week. And right after our examination, I will be distributing some reports, so you will be grouped again, or you will be grouped uh, per topic. You'll be given your respective topic to discuss, and that 30% of your grades will be taken from that report. Now this morning, our discussion will be about the global interstate system. But before we start, I want you to say something, or what do you think, or how do you understand the word global interstate system? From the word itself, global interstate, what do you think is the purpose of this? Or what do you think is the significance of this global interstate system? You may write your answer in the comment section, okay, with your name and your section. So I will wait for your answer. I will give you two minutes for this activity. What is global interstate system? In your own understanding, okay? Please do not copy directly from the internet, okay? You may read it, but you can also have your own idea based on what you have read from the internet. Okay, thank you so much. Now, allow me to share my screen this morning as we continue with our discussion. So, I am now sharing my screen to everyone. Yes, this is the global interstate system. Now, when we talk about interstate system, this refers to a system of international relations. It is the world system of human interaction. All the activities which are done with people from different uh, countries, nationalities, we meet from, for a certain summit, we exchange thoughts, we chat each other, um, we exchange our goods, that's interstate. Like a certain state joins a certain state interstate like the purpose of this why they join each other to help especially those developing country now the modern world system is structured politically as an interstate system a system of competing and allying states now in the modern era they define world system or it is structured politically with competition and allying states there are also parts of the country wherein there is this what's called faction. There are one faction wherein itong basa na ito, they are um, together. They have the same goals, objectives. Um, they have the same aspiration. And this one is quite different. So magkaroon naman ng allied, no? Magkakaroon ng competition between these two countries. Like what happened with Palestine and uh, Israel. So, although they are just uh, nearby, Magkatabi sila ng mga basa, but they have this problem because they have different uh, perspective. So, nagkaroon sila ng pato. And most of the time, the purpose of this is to invade this small country. Kasi ang mga ibang basa, kasi they are, um, they are into invading others because they want to extend their territory. Yun yung nagiging problema bakit nagkakaroon ng mga uh, competition, allying states, 
because some are you know using this opportunity to invade other country para sa kupin para i-extend yung kanilang territory now it is um, the fundamental and basis of the competitive commodity economy at the global system level a system of international relations so it's not just about talking about goods but there is also a competition nagkaroon din ng competition kapag natawag natin international relation now the most important feature of the interstate system is that it is anarchic a system in which all states constantly face actual or potential threats and their main goal is security. Ito yung isa sa pinakamagandang purpose or feature ng interstate system. Now, with this, like um, countries are becoming ready to face uh, future problems like threats, competition, yun nga sabi ko yung pananakop. Like through this international uh, interstate or through this interstate, they could prepare themselves. Our country can prepare for some threats from different country. No? So unlike politics within states, relation between states take place in Hovigian's or Hovigian state of nature. This is characterized by the war of every man against every man. Ito na yung natawa natin, Hovigian state of nature. Ito yung pinaka-concrete na example ng competition. In order for them to invade this certain country, nagkakaroon ng war. War of every man against every man. Diba? Like what happened with uh, Afghanistan? Ano yung ginawa ng mga, what do you call that? The terrorist group? Because they used war to what? To invade that place. To, to rule that place in their own. Then, it's only war. The only thing they can do is war. A constant and violent condition of competition in which each individual has a natural right to everything, regardless of the interests of others. So, yun. Hobbes defined the laws of nature as rational precepts that lead individuals toward a state of peace. Okay? So, bago nagkaroon ng peace talaga, it always begins with war. We cannot gain peace without war. Like, we are using the nature of war to attain peace. So parang ganun, like it's quite, um, to have war or to have peace is to have war. Parang it is somewhat paradox, no? Nagkaroon ng paradox because the only thing, um, the only way we can aim this peace, we can earn this peace is through war, no? Yung mga karoon ng mga competition, matirang magtibay. The first law of nature is that every person should seek peace with others unless Others are not willing to cooperate, in which case, may one may use the helps of war. So kapag hindi madalas ang magandang usapan, no, nagkakaroon talaga ng war. And that's one of the features of global interstate system. No? Kapag si China and Philippines hindi nakasundo with their good words, with peace talk, yan, nagkakaroon ng war. War, they use war as, as an instrument, no? To, to have peace, kasi in Minsa naman, the point is, they were not given attention if there's no war. Parang ginamit yung war para um, <coughs> manorte sila ng government or any uh, rightful authorities. Kaya pansin nyo, di ba, yung mga activist group natin, they use war because they have the sentiments, may mga sentiments sila hindi na na ipaalabas. That's why they're using war to, you know, call the attention of the authority. Well, if it's not true, good, no? Hindi naman tama ang gamitin ang war as a sort of um, noticing people, especially the public offices. Now, here are the objectives of our lesson this morning. First, give the meaning of global interstate system. We're done with that. Two, explain the effects of globalization on governments. How does globalization affect governments? Next, identify the institution that govern international relations. Later on, we will be knowing those um, institutions that actually govern international relations. And define and discuss internationalism and globalization. When we talk about interstate, papasok can see internationalism. Now, the interstate highway system is named after President Eisenhower who believes a reliable system of freeways 
was necessary for the economic development and defense of the US. So ito yung pinaka founder talaga ng interstate highway system, no? Before ito nagkaroon ng global interstate system, it began with interstate highway system which was originally um, founded by President Eisenhower who believed a reliable system of freeways would be desired for economic development defense of the US because for him it is one way to help a country to have this interstate when there is an interstate there is this rendering of help from to one another wag lang talaga gamitin yung interstate to invade other countries but others are doing that no ginawa na yung iba yan like sa umpisa parang tulong-tulong lang hanggang wawat sa time na they already have the power in that country and it's already under their control and that's a problem okay now what is um interstate system in global relation interstate relation are those authoritative actions understanding or commitments of the government authorities that leaders of one state to do with the government authorities or another state or its group of citizens either bilateral uh, bilaterally through international organization so this is it now we talk about interstate relation and just the authoritative action like kapag ganito ito ba talaga dapat and there is also this understanding and commitment of the governmental authorities because they are the implementer of all these laws they are the superior no so next simula talaga sa kanila with their authoritative actions okay now how does the interstate system work work lang to dapat hindi works work major interstate uh, routes are designated by one or two digit numbers routes with odd numbers north and south while well, even numbered run east and west for north south routes, the lowest number sign in the, the, the west, while the lowest number is routes are in the south. So, ito mga code ito siya, no? This is a code wherein it works in interstate system. Now, according to Weber 1997, he describes the state as a compulsory political organization with a centralized government that maintains the legitimate use of force uh, a certain territory. Minsan nga, no, force is, force is really used. We cannot deny the fact na in the interstate, minsan kinakailangan ng dahas, no, ginagamit ng dahas to, to have connection or to, to invade this place. Kaya nga, isa ang war as an instrument, no, or as an instrument of this interstate. In layman's term, it refers to a country and its government. Like for example, the government of the Philippines. Ito yung ginagamit, authoritarian, no? Especially, um, especially ngayon sa panahon ni Duterte, like, napansin talaga natin that there is this huge change in terms of uh, government policy. Especially the, the war on drugs, no? That's one of the best examples of this centralized government through uh, uh, authoritative actions. Kasi minsan, pag ito gamit ng authoritative actions, people are became so, are become so cruel. They became so, you know, uncharitable, wherein they do bad things over good things. Kaya, we cannot, deny, we cannot blame uh, PRRD nowadays of reducing these things as a sort of authoritative action. Now, the state is said to have four attributes. First, it exercises authority over a specific population. So that's very basic. No? Para sa hindi ng tao talaga, you need to set some authoritative action. Second, it governs a specific territory. Of course, we have our own territory, our um, area of responsibility. Third, a state has a structure of government and crafts Various rules that people, society will follow. Okay, so when we talk about state, we need to follow whether we like it or not because we're part of that. Fourth, the most crucial, the state has sovereignty over its territory. Sovereignty is one of the fundamental principles of modern state politics. Sovereignty here refers to, the, to 
internal external authority. Internally, no individuals or groups can operate in a given national territory by ignoring the states. This means that groups like churches, civil society, business corporation, and other blah blah establish their parishes. So no, like before you can do something, you really have to obey in the rules set by by the government. Because we're part of this country, we're part of this society. Therefore, we need have to follow both internal and external one. Externally, sovereignty means that a, that um, states policies and uh, procedures are independent of the intervention of other states. Russia and China, for example, cannot pass laws for the Philippines and vice versa. So that's external aspect. No, it's only the Filipino who can pass some laws because we're from here, but others could not. Although we have the international state or interstate, still the president allowed to decide for us. No, but it's the Filipino. It's us through our power. Kaya karon na people's power. Power. Now, on the other hand, the concept of nation emphasizes the organic ties that had groups of people gather and transpire, a sense of loyalty, belonging, support, the city, language, religion. No? That's the concept of nation. Dapat nagkakaroon ng unity no? despite the ethnic differences, language, religion, and others. That's according to Scuttle, 2014. Now, according to Benedict Anderson, is a nation is an imagined community. Calling it imagined means... The nation allows one to feel con a connection with a community of people, even if she will never meet all over them or lifetime. So that's what we call um, imagined community. How you're going to immerse yourself with others in different community. But you have to go outside and find friends, you know, explore the beauty of outside world. For example, if you cheer for a Filipino athlete in an Olympic game, it's not because you personally know him or her, but because you imagine your connections, both members of the Filipino community. Like even you don't know these candidates, you cheer, you cheer them because you know you are from the same nation. How about limited? It is limited because it does not go beyond a given official boundary. Uh, a big, and because rights and responsibilities are mainly the privilege of concern of the citizens of that nation. So it's Italians concern of the citizen, the welfare of its people. Now combining these two, a nation state can be defined as a political community that emanates from civic society to legitimately execute peace. So, ang dyan yung pinaka-cost or ng interstate talaga, just like peace summit is the to, to attain peace. According to Scato 2014, nation states can manipulate competitive advantages with international and political issues transnational civic society organization and multinational companies. On the other hand, they are also accountable for a host of international norms and standards find themselves in subordinate position to protect their economy and face new kinds of pressures of supernatural integration and focus on local fragmentation. So it's how to against the focus on one country and the people, they really help one another to protect their economy. That's the key word here, the economy. Why there is this interstate? Like we need to take good care of our country amidst interstate because we want to protect our economy, our culture, our tribe, everything about us. As we all know that globalization results from the removal of barriers between national and when say globalization, we say, wala na mga blocks, wala na barrier, wala na hadlang, para sa iyo to connect with uh, the people around the world. Let me check my camera. Okay, it's still functional.
to encourage the flow of goods, services, capital, and labor. So we've been discussing this. Dahil sa globalization na karoon ng open na boundary, like other countries can now sell their products in different country. Okay? No first, globalization is seen to impose a forced choice upon nation states. So hindi naman talaga, no? But in some ways, no? This is really the goal of uh, the globalization to seen or to impose forced choice upon nation states. Like you have no choice but to have this. Second, it is establishment of economic and political integration. Nagkaroon din ang economic and political integration sa globalization. And third, this is the establishment of international laws and principles. These three mentioned effects of globalization to nation states are uh, vertical effects. So nagkaroon ng vertical effects at ito yung nakikita ang epekto ng pagkaroon ng globalization. But what Slaughter 2004 stated that globalization has a horizontal effect which can be observed in information of transgovernmental network. Kapag kasi uh, horizontal, so everything is level. Lahat is magka-level. Kapag vertical naman, it follows a step. Wala sa baba hanggang sa taas na position. All right. Now, the fourth effect of recession is the rise of transnational activism. Isa rin ito sa nangyayari, because of globalization, nagkakaroon ng mga activism, terrorism nga, di ba sabi ko. Because people are exposed what are the happenings around the group, and uh, these people are using this as their opportunity to rule these people and to introduce this activism. Kaya tayo, don't be part of it. No, dapat, especially you are a future peacemaker. You should have not joined this kind of activity. Unless otherwise it is needed in your course. So this is the right time to have it. But if there's no implementation, there's no memo about it, you don't have to. But what I'm trying to say is when we join the activism in some important things, I'm not saying that we will rejoin it, but you have to be activist in your own way, like fighting your own freedom. I mean, fighting your rights to someone who's humiliating you. People who are um, dragging you down. But it's not to the extent that you will be joining this group and be part of the rally and be part of this biggest activist group. Do not do that, okay? Now, for example, an advocacy-based organization in the Philippines may concern itself. Sige, one forward now. We'll just discuss the important part, the gist of this. Okay. I want you to see who are the people um, in I'm in organization now. This is it. To facilitate connection among national states. Kasi ang mga ibang content ito kasi polit ulit na kaya I'm trying to, uh, to skip them. In a way, I'm doing naman sa first part and the last part. Now, to facilitate connection among nation states, intergovernmental organization, were established whose aim is to foster strong economic, political, cultural, educational, and technical uh, intergovernmental relationship. So, isa yan sa goal, no? Bakit nagkakaroon ng mga ganitong um, interstate system? All right. Now, example of this are the ASEAN. Yeah, sa pinaka And I know you're aware of ASEAN. Isa sa sa lang facilitate ng mga interstate. EU, European Union, and the World Trade Organization as to trade. Also, some example of institution and organization that govern international relations include ito sila. Sila yung nagkakaroon na facilitate ng international relation or global interstate system. Web Humanitarian um, Organization Action, Government Agency Department, I take note na lang. International Corporation, General Electric, Media Outlets, Intergovernmental Organization, World Trade Organization. Some of these are private um, groups, I guess. International Communication, Amnesty, International Research Centers, Think Task, Associate, ayan, marami sila. All right, so thank you so much. But what, what's the best thing is you have to understand ano bang pinaka-goal ng interstate? No? 
it's creating good relationship and sometimes in modern era it is a sort of competition or politically structured and it became a sort of competition kaya nga to invade other national other world other countries again don't ever forget to write your name as that will serve as your answer and i'll be uploading your exam this week i hope everybody could join okay all right, so thank you so much, everyone. See you next meeting for your report. We'll begin with group one. I will be sending later on your, your list. What, who are the members of group one and what topic are you going to discuss? Okay, so good morning. God bless. See you next meeting.